Yes, thank you. I'm not sure I've formed it well yet, but I wanted to go back to your original statement about maybe it's global inequalities of capitalism and free market, and maybe it's religion. I don't want to choose a single one that's the worst thing that's happened to us all. But I was, was lucky enough this summer to hear an extraordinary statistician speak, uh, Hans Rusley, who created, wrote, uh, Mind the Gap. People know that. And he looks at um, the global population over two and three hundred years. What's <coughs> changed in different countries when different things have changed? And one of the questions always to him was, how do we reduce the global population? Uh, we were at a science conference. It's a really significant question of, will there be enough food in 100 years' time, and on and on. Um, and questions within that are also, but religion suggests to people that they continue to have children even when it's not good for themselves or the international population or the global population. And one of the things that he looked at quite a lot is equality. Where there is more fundamental economic equality, there is less religion. And he talked about Sweden, and he talked about his home upbringing and being 78. He said, we used to have Taliban values, which is the wording that he used. We remember when you couldn't buy condoms here, even though they were available, they would just refuse to sell them. And now the Bishop of Stockholm is a woman and lives with her wife in the Bishop's palace with their child. Those aren't Swedish values, he said. They're modern values, and they're based on some basic economic equality. And he suggested to all of us that what we needed to do was where your living wage, what you had as a dollar a day, that needs to go to $10 a day, and we will see religion drop. And I wondered, I guess, in this circumstance, if you have comments on that for other institutions. No, I think that's a very profound and you know, <coughs> acute observation. Um, first of all, I think, um, greater equality does tend to um, change the balance between the genders um, and that does empower women and through the empowerment of women generally family size reduces so the empowerment of women is key to um, the empowerment of all families and economies uh, and of course reducing the upscale increase uh, runaway increase in global population it's also true that, yes, as people get better educated and have greater opportunities, that faith tends to decline. The proportion of people who have a faith tends to reduce because scientific knowledge does for most people who have a rational mindset, that does trump religion. Now, superstition is not a good way to understand the world. Um, you understand the world best through evidence scientific evidence, research, that gives us a better understanding of how the world works and how we can improve it, rather than relying upon faith and uh, the supernatural. So you're, you're right there, and I think that um, in terms of global population, we can probably sustain quite a considerable increase, because you know the ingenuity of science and the capacity of human beings to develop new technologies is always there. But we should never be uncritical of science and never think that science will automatically solve things. And, you know, it's hard to imagine how the world could sustain, you know, a population of 15,000 million people. Um, that, that, it, it could be, it could be with new technologies, but it, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a stretch. And I think we do need to recognise that this also segues into ecological concerns about the environmental stresses we're putting on the planet in terms of soil, quality, in terms of water quality and availability, these are all big issues and I think sadly one of the big future conflicts uh, is likely to be over food, water and land um, as a result of burgeoning populations and of course if we have runaway climate change or destruction as I prefer to call it, uh, which is not automatic but it's likely, then that could also provoke a new round of conflicts um, because of course as sea levels rise um, millions of people or hundreds of millions of people in low-lying fertile deltas 
which have some of the biggest populations and are some of the most productive agricultural lands, they will disappear under the oceans. Now, where are those people going to go? Where are they going to be housed? What jobs are they going to have? Even here in Britain, parts of Britain are going to disappear if we have significant climate change. Um, not only increased you know, tidal surges, but you know, low-lying parts of this country will just go under the waves. And you know, hundreds of thousands of people are going to have to move. Hundreds of thousands of homes are going to become worthless. Um, jobs in those areas are going to have to be moved and transferred. This is an economic dislocation on a phenomenal scale. Now, I emphasize, it's not automatic. It's not guaranteed that this will happen, but that's the way it's looking. And we need to have the foresight, not based upon faith, but based upon scientific knowledge and a rational capacity to respond to preempt those changes.